Hi guys, what's going on? I'm just gonna give um, a few, a little bit just for uh, people to hop on. Thanks. I wasn't really sure about it, to be honest. Um, it, I, I, I imagined it differently in my head, but I mean, I like it. I just, I wasn't sure about it. Kind of felt like this kind of took away from this, but I didn't want to do a bunch of mandalas and stuff, so. Um, so we're gonna do a resin. We're gonna start off this live with a, like a resin kind of tutorial, I guess. Since some of you guys were asking how I do my resin, so I wanted to start with this because I'm gonna prep the back. Okay, so there's two ways that I prep the back of my pieces. Um, depending on where I get my blanks, usually it's from 24 Hour Crafts. Um, they send their blanks with a masking tape background, which is really nice because, I mean, you see that it's kind of burnt along the sides, and that's the reason that they do this, to protect the back from burns. The front doesn't matter because you're usually going to, like, paint it up somehow anyways, but if you don't finish the back, um, this protects it. So you just peel this off at the end, um, like, whenever you're done painting. Now, when I do resin, I leave this on until the very end because this adds, like, an extra kind of barrier between my resin and my wood. Um, so I use liquid latex or hot glue to resin my pieces, um, or to protect the back of my pieces. Um, th this one, I'm going to do the hot glue method just to kind of show you guys. And then I'll show you whenever we go to start resining, I'll show you, um, some of the other pieces that have the liquid latex. The reason that I do both is because liquid latex, latex, people have an allergy to that sometimes. Um, so, you know... <laughs> Oh, with the nails? Yeah. I used to be square like a long time ago, but for the last two years I've been pointy and I just can't go back. So I'm just going to outline the edge. Ignore my cat. He's in his litter box. I'm sorry about it. But I'm just going to outline the edge with hot glue. Um, and like this will peel off with the masking tape whenever I'm done with the resin. So... I'm not being like too, too careful, but I'm trying to get it like relatively even so that whenever I set this piece down to resin it, it still is like level, you know what I mean? Because if your piece isn't level, then the resin's gonna kind of settle one way or another, and then one part of your piece is gonna be nice and coated, and the other piece is gonna have some dots poking through. So I'm just quickly, well, sort of quickly, um, just doing a hot glue barrier i guess so this protects it for when like if resin drips over the side which typically it does happen you know um i more often than not have drips underneath my pieces that i have to pick off um now if you don't protect your back at all you can always go in with like a drummer a drummer a dremel which is like a sanding tool kind of thing like, if you think, like, you know, when you get your nails done, they, like, sand down <laughs> your nails with the spinny thing. That's what that's what a Dremel is. So you can get one um, for pretty cheap. I think I only got one for, like, 10, 15 bucks at, like, um, Harbor Freight. But it's, it's messy. Um, whenever you're sanding down resin, like, all the little, like, resin just stuff, the powder from when you, from sanding it just kind of gets everywhere. And, like, you should be doing it outside. You got to wear PPE, PPE, like, all this annoying stuff. And it's just, it takes more work to do that than it does to protect the piece, um, you know, beforehand. So, yeah. So, we're using hot glue for this one. And then when we get over, when we're done with this, I'll show you guys um, the ones that I've done with liquid latex. Now, I won't protect with hot glue, unless it has this masking tape background. So for pieces that I don't get from 24 Hour Crafts that don't have this uh, masking tape, I will not use this hot glue method. And I'll either do liquid latex or I will sand it down. Um, I'll sand down the piece after the resin is cured. So I'm just kind of giving a little bit of a barrier but like not too much you know and i'm trying not to go over the edge either um i mean you can kind of pick the glue off if you do but i'm just being a little careful <clears throat> 
Hello, hello. Yes, ha Harbor Freight's awesome. They're like pretty inexpensive for a lot of things. Um, I forgot that I had one near me for like the longest time. I don't go there very often, but if I need like Dremel tools and stuff, um, I'll go there. Or my cat, he's uh he's getting into the closet. <laughs> I gotta get more hot glue one sec. Oh yeah, yeah, I've seen people do that with resin pieces, like you put the Elmer's glue on the back. But yeah, unfortunately with wood, the glue method probably wouldn't work too well. I mean, maybe with the backing like this one has, but. Hello, hello. I was gonna do this before I hopped on, but then I figured, well, I might as well just show you how, to, how I'm doing it. So this is one of the ways Hello, welcome. <laughs> this is one of the ways that I um, protect the back of my piece whenever I do a resin coat. So like you can use liquid latex, but you have to be careful with liquid latex because you know you don't know who has an allergy. So if someone buys your piece and has a liquid latex or just like a latex allergy, like, you know, you could be um, unintentionally exposing them to it, you know, to have an allergic reaction. So this is just um, another way that I prep my pieces before I do a resin coat. So it's already painted. Um, we're about to do a little resin tutorial here in a few minutes before we just, you know, do my normal painting. But I did have people ask me to do a little resin tutorial. So I told them on Friday before we start the live like painting, we would do some resin work. So that's what we're doing. <clears throat> This actually is eight inches uh, because it's like pretty equally wide as it is long. It looks like a nice big shape. Usually if you have like a wooden piece that's more like square, you know, if it's pretty even um, length and width, you'll get a piece that looks a little bigger. But no, this is this is only eight inches, but it's pretty much like eight inches wide and maybe eight inches tall somewhere along along that line but yeah so this piece of wood is protected with masking tape on the back that's just um the way that one of the peop the places that I get my wooden blanks from that's just the way that they protect their pieces um from burning from their uh their laser cutting like wood machine and typically you'll just peel this off but since I do a resin coat after I'm done painting, I leave it on until the very end. And I just kind of use it as an extra barrier between my resin, um, if I have any like resin drips or anything. So, so we're just gonna uh, wait for it to dry and then we'll like, you know, set it over. But yeah, a glow forge. I don't know why I can't like remember the term glow forge. <laughs> I just say laser cutting wood machine. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna we're gonna move. We're gonna move over to um, another area. So the reason I'm taking you guys into my kitchen is because I warm resin in, in hot water. So that's why. Do do do. So here is um, a piece that I have used liquid latex on. This does not have any barrier between the wood and the liquid latex. So whenever I post this online, since it's not a custom, I'll put a little disclaimer about that. So that's with the liquid latex. And then this one is with the hot glue. But I got this piece from a different supplier, so it doesn't have the masking tape back. Try and like raise you guys up so that I can kind of see what you're saying. Um, 
one second. I'll be right back. getting my iPad out so that I can see comments. <laughs> my socks, they are tie-dye. <laughs> They're just tie-dye socks. All right, so. I know the lighting probably isn't the best, but it is what it is. So right now I'm just warming up water. That's all I'm doing at the moment. The butterfly is made of wood. All right, so we got our hot water in a little cup um, and I just like set this in my sink. So this is gonna be like a little uh, water bath to help warm the resin up just a little bit, just to kind of get the resin to flow a little better. I'm sorry. So safety first, you wanna make sure that you're wearing gloves. Um, also like like other uh, PPE, like respirator, you wanna pull your hair back, blah, blah, blah. Because um, resin with, in its uh, unmixed form and uncured form um, can release some like toxic fumes. So like, they, they say like do it outside or do it in a well ventilated area. Um, I will have a disclaimer. I do not take 100% of every single precaution. I just don't live in a place that lets me do my work outside. So I take, I wear gloves and stuff like that. Um, and then I use airtight containers for two reasons. One, to kind of seal off the resin, since I can't put this outside. Um, I try and seal it off so it's airtight while it's curing to try and like avoid the fumes. <laughs> um, and also to protect it from like dust, cat hair, whatever floaties are, you know, in, in the air, so. So I am using a two-part resin. So you see that it says one-to-one -one, uh, from Resin Rockers. This is my favorite resin that I use. It's nice and clear, um, glass-like finish, it's wonderful. Low bubbles, it's like advanced like bubble releasing formula, things like that. So it's a one-to-one -one ratio. So I have an A and a B part. So this one is the B part. We're gonna grab the A part and we're mixing equal amounts. Most one-to-one -one resins are like that. Um, you'll have to read the directions for like each brand of resin, you know, some is different, but one-to-ones are, you know, one part of each base. And I change my gloves all the time because I hate like feeling sticky and I just, you know, anyways. So now that we have both of your parts, we're gonna mix them together in a separate cup. If I'm just mixing a little bit of resin, sometimes I'll do like um, one ounce of each, you know, and it'll fit in this little cup, but doing a little bit more resin than like I would with just like a keychain or, you know, things, stuff like that. Like if I'm pouring molds, I typically only you know, do an ounce at a time. But when I'm doing my 
doming of my like wooden pieces, I do about two ounces at a time. And if I wind up needing more, I'll just repeat this process and mix again. But um, I, I mix, I do a little bit at a time because once you mix these together, your resin, the chemical reaction starts happening. Um, and you know, your, re your resin starts to set. I'm trying to kind of get you guys to sort of see what I'm doing. I, I'm trying to see if I went the right way. So as you can see, um, the green cup is hot water and then I am just setting it in so that it kind of submerges just to the level of like the amount of resin I have in the cup. Um, it's like a water bath. So this is how I warm up my resin. Warming resin is helpful because it changes the viscosity of the resin. It kind of helps it flow a little bit more. So if you have a resin that's just like really thick, some, some brands is just really, really thick. Resin Rockers is pretty thin as it is, um, but I just, I always like to warm my resin as I mix it. Um, when you mix, you're gonna cause some air bubbles. So the, the heat from the hot water bath will help to release the bubbles as you're mixing. So um, just keep in mind that like if you're using a fast cure or like any type of like fast set epoxy, which I don't use, but if you are using it, I don't recommend doing the water bath because you're gonna accelerate the curing process, um, which for fast sets, it already you know set, starts to like set pretty quickly. Um, and then you're gonna have like zero work time. With the resin that I use, it's a one-to-one -one, uh, part from Resin Rockers. They have a relatively like long work time, which is super nice when I'm doming my pieces because then I don't feel like I have to rush through and cover it. You know, I can kind of take my time and try and, and try to like avoid spilling it over the edge of my piece. Um, even though I protect the back, I just, you know, it's better to just let it, you know, do it slowly. So. Um, I'm just mixing, mixing, mixing. I'll let it sit. So um, I don't know if you guys can see bubbles or not. There's not many, but there's some in there. Um, I want to show you guys what it kind of looks like if I just let it sit in my hot water for just like a minute or so. You'll see all the bubbles kind of start to like go in one area um, and you can you know get rid of those really fast. So while we're uh, waiting on that, does anybody have any questions for right now? We have a couple different pieces to resin today. So here is my most recently finished piece. Sorry, my camera's painting a different way. But you can see how nice and shiny it is. Uh, this is a custom order, but on the back, you can see I haven't taken the liquid latex off or anything, but you can see, let me take my glove off so I can show you. You can see the resin drips on the back. And now if this wasn't protected, the resin would just be on there and you'd have to use a Dremel. Um, but I just, it just pops right off with the liquid latex barrier. I just use tweezers because I don't want to like ruin my nails, but you just kind of twist and give a little bit of a pull and it pops right off. And then once you get all the little resin drippings, you just peel off the liquid latex and you know, it's, it's good to go. Sometimes I'll paint the back black, but I think, uh, I think for this one, I'm just going to leave it, leave it plain. Yep. But anyways, you guys get the idea, right? And then I just throw these out. So I use two different methods on the back. It depends on a couple things. It depends on um, if someone has a liquid latex allergy or just like a latex allergy um, or not. So I like to use liquid latex because it's easy. But because some people have allergies, you got to kind of like, you know, pay attention to that and keep that in mind. So if it's, if it's a custom, if it's a custom order, what I do is I put um, 
I put it like a little like choice, a little drop down on my website um, to let me know if you have a like uh, uh, if you have a latex allergy or not. If you don't, then I use liquid latex. Um, if you do, I'll use hot glue or I won't use anything at all. So this piece has a masking tape kind of layer um, between the wood, like on top of the wood. That's just the way this company does it to protect the um, edges from burns from the Glowforge or like their wood cutting machine. Um, not all companies do this, but my favorite place does. So I leave it on as like an extra barrier until I'm done with my piece. So for this instance, I just lined it with hot glue around the edges. And then once the resin's cure on the front, I will peel it off all in like one piece. So that's really, really easy. Kind of same idea with the liquid latex, except there's no barrier between the wood and the liquid latex. So if you're someone that has an allergy, um, I mean, I don't, so like, I don't know how sensitive, but some people are more sensitive than others, you know what I mean? So um, there might be some residue on the wood because wood is porous, you know? Um, so in this case, uh, this is not a custom order. So when this goes on my website, there's just gonna be a disclaimer that I use liquid latex on the back. So that's the two ways that I'll protect it um, or I just won't protect it at all. And I'll go in with like a Dremel tool like a, you know, like a spinning, like uh, nail, nail file thingy. Um, and I'll like Dremel off the drips of resin, but that, that I hate doing that. It's a pain in the ass. So um, I, I don't usually, I don't unless I have to. So this, uh, you can't really see many, many bubbles. Um, sometimes if it's like extra bubbly, you'll, you'll see it. But um, anyways, we're going to start. So let me Kind of go down a little bit so you guys can see. And there's like a little piece of like popsicle stick in here. Anyways, so I start out kind of slowly. Um, I am doming on p on on top of like a like a, a resin doming mat, and you can see that it's not completely flat. It has kind of like the little triangles. And that catches resin as it drips and kind of keeps your piece kind of held up a little bit so that if resin drips off, it's not going to collect directly underneath your piece. It's just going to drip off um, and then like just collect inside the little divots of the, um, the silicone mat. So I love these ones. These ones are way better than like the honeycomb silicone mats that like you'll see oftentimes when someone's using um uv resin and the honeycomb mats like they're fine i don't really have anything against them but in this case if resin drips you're gonna have a lot of resin and it's gonna um kind of fill up those little honeycomb parts really really fast so it's kind of gonna de defeat the purpose of you you know not wanting anything to stick on the back so that's why i use these ones um i got this from etsy the seller has i have to i'll have to look at it when i get back to my phone like when we're done with them the resin part but she has been sold out of them but i did see that she might have one or two back in stock so if you guys um have been waiting for her to restock i would go check out her etsy sometime today um but yeah anywho so i'm just kind of slowly pouring the resin and just kind of pushing it around with my popsicle stick if it does start to drip over the edge i'm not really gonna be that concerned about it i'm just being careful so that like a bunch of it doesn't drip over the edge but usually in the corners like right here i can see that it's starting to drip there's really not much i can do about that but since it's protected on the back um it's going to be a relatively easy cleanup you know in a day or two once this resin has cured Um, so even though I'm doing a couple pieces today, I'm doing one at a time. And that's just so that I can make sure that I can get this covered up with the lid so that no little like dust or floaties make its way into the resin because you won't see it while it's, while it's curing and you'll only notice it whenever it's done. And then 
you'll have to add another layer of resin to cover it up and it's just a pain in the butt. So I work slowly, quickly but slowly, and then like one piece at a time. I try not to do more than I can handle at once. And you don't have to use a popsicle stick either. You can get those silicone tools, but I just, I use popsicle sticks. Normally my pieces require two coats of resin anyways. So like tomorrow I'll have to, you know, check it out and see, but I have a feeling it's probably going to. So before I put the lid on here, I'm gonna take I usually do about two. I can get lucky sometimes with one, but more often than not, it's two. So I'm just going in with like a lighter. This is more of like a blowtorch lighter. Um, so it really pops um, bubbles really fast. Um, the kind of resin that I use does not have many bubbles anyways, but I still use the flame just in case. And then I, Put the cap on and that's i let it sit that's it for that i put it somewhere flat so that i don't have to worry you know about it dripping and then i'm gonna get my other container So um, right now I only have one of those doming mats, so I have to do a little different with this one, which is annoying, but you know, it's fine. Yeah, the butterfly. So I got these little, uh, I don't know what these are called. I think they're like paint. Like if you're doing a paint pour, you know, you can use these little triangle things to kind of hold your canvas up so that the paint drips down. That's kind of the same idea for this. So, um, this one has the hot glue on the back. So I'm just kind of putting them underneath it, kind of making sure that it's as level as possible, right? Um, these guys are plastic, so like if resin drips on them, you'll have to like peel it off, but I've used these before and it's not, you know, they're not that hard. To do so all right I have all of the areas that I want supported and now we're gonna now we're gonna pour where did I put my resin aha thanks so I kind of start out in the middle and I just like spread the resin out to the edges at this point, since my resin has been sitting and I can feel that it's still nice and warm, uh, I mean, it's warm from the water bath, but it's also just starting to get warm because the the reaction between the parts has started. Um, so your resin's gonna heat up like normally anyways. Um, so I'm gonna work a little faster, but the flow is still fine, so I'm not too concerned about it. But I can tell that the bubbles are like, almost non-existent which is nice i love resin rockers so i might have to mix more for the little like toe beans but that's fine because i have another piece that i want to resin anyways so we'll just repeat the process we'll, we'll shut this lid and then repeat the process that we did when we mixed the resin the first time they a lot of people say like you're not supposed to like mix resins you know, uh, because if you have like a different um, ratio between like your one mix and the other, it can kind of throw off uh, the way that it cures. Personally, I have never had an issue with it. I mean, I don't make tumblers, I just do these. So if I run, if I run out of resin mid piece, I'm gonna have to make more resin, you know, um, or mix more resin. And I like haven't had any issues with it, so gonna use what I can but I think I am gonna have to mix more hello hello doing kind of a quick little resin tutorial before I start painting for today
All right, so I'm gonna put this in a little bag to put throw outside. But before I shut this lid, uh, I'm gonna pop some bubbles. Um, I know it's not done yet. We're gonna mix some more resin, but I'm gonna protect this while I can um, from any little dust floaties or cat hair or whatever else might be floating around in my apartment. I did clean and vacuum this morning, but those little floaties literally come out of nowhere. <laughs> so, all right, so I'm gonna shut this and just move it out of the way for right now. We're gonna repeat our process. You'd love to learn how to dot. Well, if you watch for a little bit, you'll watch me do it. Um, uh, in probably about 10 minutes or so, we're gonna start dotting. Sorry for the loud noise. Um, the water's not gonna be on forever. Dot painting is so fun. All right, so for those of you guys who were, are just tuning in and missed the beginning, I have a cup of hot water in my sink and that's how I uh, warm up my resin. And it kind of creates a little bit of a better flow. Um, but if you're using fast set resin, which I am not, but if you're using fast set resin, I do not recommend, I can't get my glove on. I do not recommend doing a water bath to warm your resin up. All right, so we're gonna mix another two ounces of one-to-one -one resin from Resin Rockers. Do one uh, thing of B, I guess it's two and two. I think these are two ounce cups, so we're doing four ounces. Two ounces of the A part and two ounces of the B part. And if I have leftover resin, I'll just pour some into some molds. I am uh, mixing up some resin to do a dome coat on some of my art. So we're just mixing resin at the moment. But um, that's how I seal a lot of my paintings. I do a resin coat. That's my, one of my favorite ways to seal paintings. I just think it looks so pretty, so shiny, so glass-like. It's just beautiful. So we're just mixing the resin up to prepare to do a dome coat. All right, into the hot water bath. Um, just make sure if you do a hot water bath that you don't spill water over the edges. Um, Cause that's gonna obviously mess with your, with your resin. It makes it water resistant. Technically, I guess waterproof, but I paint on wood. So like the back isn't gonna be waterproof. You know what I mean? Um, and wood will warp if you if you put it in like areas of high humidity and water and stuff like that So like I don't recommend Putting my art like outside or somewhere where it's going to be exposed to like extreme humidity and stuff like that uh, But it does make it a little bit more water resistant than like a typical varnish, you know, but a lot of uh, Spray on and paint on varnishes. They are water resistant as well. But yeah, I mean, I've gotten it wet. I haven't had any issues, but I recommend my stuff to be just like indoor only. I, I can dot paint on a lot of things. Um, it's more just so about like creativity, you know? What do you like to paint on? Um, I like painting on wood and like some canvases, sometimes like metal pieces or I'll paint on top of resin. So like keychains and jewelry and things like that. Uh, people do stones, people do mugs, people like you can you can even like mix some paint with some textile medium and paint on some shoes. Um, 
I want to do that eventually this year. I think I'm going to get like a cheapo pair of like fake knockoff like vans and try and paint on top of them. But, you know, eventually. <laughs> but you can paint on a bunch of things. Some people paint it on like, um, I've seen people do like designs on the back of like a jean jacket. Um, you know, little like uh, canvas, like purse bag things jewelry boxes like you you can you can dot paint pretty much on everything but you just have to pay attention to what the surface is um you know because some paint require or some surfaces require different different types of acrylic paint whether it be an enamel paint or a multi-surface paint or like a regular just acrylic paint you know um but yeah but i typically just use regular acrylic paint most of my stuff um I seal anyways so like I don't I don't do mugs I don't do I don't do that kind of stuff so I don't have to worry about multi-surface paints or anything like that hello hello all right so we're just gonna do the last two little paw toe bean things. Sorry, let me. So the resin is very fluid right now because I just took it out of the hot water bath. Um, hot water baths are really nice, especially when you're pouring resin into molds. That's really helpful because it helps you get like the, the resin and all the little the little small areas if you're using a mold with a lot of like detail. Warming up your resin in a water bath prior to using it um, will help with that. Yeah, yeah, I can upload this live for sure. I'm a little behind. I said I was gonna upload my lives this weekend and I, or like this past weekend and then I didn't. So <laughs> I'm a little behind, but yeah, I'll put this on YouTube. I will put this one on YouTube. Going in with my lighter, popping any bubbles that might be there, but again, probably not that many. And this is gonna, this is most likely gonna need two layers, so. Um, tomorrow, whenever this first layer hardens enough, I will likely pour a second layer on top. But for now, um, this is it. So move this out of the way, set it somewhere flat. And we're gonna prep one more area. something I couldn't I couldn't find my tweezers but I found it all right I didn't clean up my mess from my last <laughs> my last resin so we'll just kind of dump that aside but this is liquid latex <laughs> um anyways all right so lastly we have the little doggo. Okay. Oh, good. Thank you. That's good to know. Yeah, I um I made some dog tags for oh, I need to put a glue up. Well. <laughs> I made I made some dog tags for my my fur siblings last year. Um uh, and they're they're Australian cattle dogs, so like they're pretty wild. Um 
I ought to put a glove on my other hand. They're pretty wild and they're still, you know, they're still going strong. They haven't broken, nothing like that. What's up, Lisa? Did I miss something? Did I miss something? So this one is also a custom. This is kind of like a, a pet portrait. <laughs> oh, how adorable. I went to uh, PetSmart today to get some hay for my guinea pigs and I was standing in line waiting to check out. And there was this, um, this English setter dog, and I like haven't seen one of those in forever, but uh, he was super friendly, so I was petting him. His name was Jerry, <laughs> and I just thought it was really funny for like a dog to be named Jerry. Resin will merge. Resin, um, it doesn't like stay in place, so as as it kind of like settles settles onto whatever surface it that it is that you're putting it on it's gonna start to level out and spread out. So chances are it's gonna drip inwards or drip over the edge before you can kind of use it as like a flood coat, if that makes sense. It's just a face. This one is just a face. I love that. Walter, Wally. We had a dog when I was growing up, his name was Otis. <laughs> so like, that's a funny name, but it, he came with that name. We adopted him when he was two. So like, he already was used to his name. We call him like Odie Man or Oatmeal or, you know, something, something different. Not usually Otis. Only if like, you know, we needed to catch his attention. If he was being bad, we'd be like, Otis. But usually it was just Odie Man. I'm not touching the resin with the flame, you guys. I'm getting it close. Um, the heat from the flame will like pop any bubbles that are in here, but I'm not touching the flame to the resin. Barb. My rescue cat, well, it's Toby. His name's Toby. But when I bought him, or when I rescued him, his name was Ralph. And I was like, yeah, he's not keeping that name. Absolutely not. Okay, so I just have like a tiny bit of leftover resin. So I'm just gonna pour some resin in some molds. I literally have like enough for like one letter. <laughs> My glitter to resin ratio I over poured I might just have to say fuck it well whatever we can still try it fine mist spray bottle and I'm trying to do this left-handed because I took my glove off with my right hand uh, the Fine Mist Spray Bottle 
will help pop any bubbles at the bottom of your mold. So if you're pouring resin into a mold and you're finding that whenever you unmold, you have a bunch of little like pin pricks or like air bubbles, um, using a fine mist spray bottle with rubbing alcohol will definitely help with that problem. Just a little tip. All right, good enough. And then I just give that a little spritz. Put the lid on it and we're good to go. Yeah, I'll share the inf in the in inspo picture in just a second. Whenever I, uh, when I get back to my desk with uh, everything. So, let me get my phone out. Let me grab the inspo picture. The dog has like some special markings that they wanted to make sure that I, I got. Um, I'm scrolling on Instagram, hold on. So, here is the dog. You can see um, that she has like that little pink part of her nose and that little like heart thing up here, her eyeliner, and then she has a brown spot. So that's what this was. So I'm not, you know, I don't draw, so it's, I did it the best that I could and she likes it. So that's all that matters. All right. Um, Bear with me as I kind of make my way back to my normal area so that we can paint. I'm going to put you guys down in a second <laughs> so that you guys don't get dizzy. Um, we're going to start painting now after I clean up really fast. But, oh, oh, he's on my chair. I might have sat down on him if you didn't say anything because I did not see him on my chair. ready <laughs> I cleaned my house or cleaned my apartment for you guys today so I gotta put away my mess oh yeah the original OG paw prints my goodness yes I have to take a little gander over to my personal Instagram for those pictures, but. <laughs> so here is my first one that I've ever done. Like, when was that? March, March 15th, 2021. So a week or so after I like started dot painting. Uh, it'll be two years in March. So this was a week after I started. Um, I was painting hours and hours and hours every day. So you might think that this looks great for just a week in, but. Um, I created a bunch of pieces prior to this that I freaking hated, but this was the first piece that I ever made. Um, I actually still have this piece because I did sell this piece. It was the first piece that I like was that I made that I was proud of. Um, the first piece that ever sold as well, but she wound up returning it because um, there was a little mishap with the sealant that I used. I used Mod Podge and I waited a week and a half and I guess it felt dry. Um, and then when I shipped it, it stuck to the bubble wrap. I'm not really sure what happened. Um, probably user error, but I 
I just gave her a refund because I didn't know how to fix it. And so now I just still have it. But yeah, so that was the first one. Here is a second one. Um, getting better, right? Um, I was like, it looks pretty good. But this one, these are big. These are like 15 inch paws, I think. And then this is like the last one that I did like a while ago. So I don't do these big ones anymore, but I did think about like just doing one for funsies to see what happens, you know, but I haven't done those big paws in a really long time. That was like what a lot of people kind of knew me for was like my big paw print paintings. All right. So, um, gotta get my paper towel ready. So, um, Mr. Tony, can you please move? Thanks. So for this one, um, I'm gonna have to mix colors and have like a nice little thing of colors. I do have some referen reference pictures. Um, no, it's not, not at all. It takes lots of practice. Yeah, that, see, I don't like that outline part because um, it's like really hard to get the dots in there, right? You know, so you take a lot of extra time trying to paint and like just make it look like it's supposed to be there. <laughs> I'll go around with like a fine little paintbrush and kind of paint around the edges, but they're, uh, they're a little difficult. Yes, ask away. I'm about to look up some pictures um, for this dragon, um, bearded dragon. I have a bunch of pictures um, that I'm gonna use for color references. Ask away. I got to figure out how to get to my messages from here. The heck, there we go. Nope. Um, I was doing a resin thing, but besides that, you didn't miss much. Okay, um, Jen, I missed the first part about your paints. I, I, didn't, I didn't see the second part. What's not showing up in your paints? How much pearl medium are you using? I haven't had that happen yet. And I use deco art for my pearl medium. So I have a bunch of pictures of all of like their bearded dragons so like as you can see they're all different so i'm just trying to pick a bunch of colors that go well with it so i typically use about like either like two-thirds paint to one-third pearl medium or half and half that's usually what i use whenever i do my pearl medium so I don't know if, ew, that's really odd. Are you using deco art? I, 
I have noticed though that some colors show up better than others. Like if I use yellow, you can't really see it as well as if you were to put it in like a blue or like a purple. Um, and the light colors as well. The light colors don't show up nearly as, as pearly, but definitely the darker colors. Oh, I grabbed the wrong color. Well, that one might be all right. I didn't mean to grab that one, though. Where's my box cutter? Just kidding, didn't need it. Huh. The neon ones, is that what you're talking about? Like the pastel neons? These ones? Or no? Or like the, the neon, like bright, bright colors. Yeah, I haven't had any issues at all. I'm kind of surprised that you can't see them. I'm not really sure why. I would say maybe add even more, potentially. Because I'm actually going to mix some right now and show you. Um, are those the which... Um, Probably never. <laughs> um, I am probably, well, hold on. Are you talking about these ones? Where's my store? Some stuff I'll never like make exactly the same way again, just because it kind of depends on like where I got the product. Um, are you talking about the, these ones? Oh, so I have a pink one. Um, I can custom do a different one. Um, I just like haven't for a while. I, I have to go buy the blank. But yeah, the only one that I have still is the pink one. Yeah, I've done a per what a blue, a green, a purple. And a pink one. I don't know why I just did that. <laughs> but I can I can custom make those ones if you'd like. Um, I'll just have to make you a custom listing. Because uh, those aren't ones that I'm, like, going to make again anytime soon, just, like, on my own, if that, if, if that makes sense. So. I used too much, but you can still kind of, this kind of looks like what, like a sandstone. I don't know if you can see the glitter to it at all, but I, I used too much. I want to, I want it a little bit lighter than this. I'm going to take out some paint. Yeah, I can, um, or you could buy the pink one, and then if you want the green one, just make a little note. Um, but I'll have to make a custom listing if you want otherwise. I can see it a tiny bit, but I see what you're talking about, Jennifer. Maybe once you, um, sometimes I find once I add like the clear coat on top, whether it be resin or just like, you know, a varnish, that tends to kind of make it, it brings the sparkle out a little bit more. Because that's what happened um, with the, uh, what's it called? The pug that I made and the, um, the chihuahua. Once I added the resin, it was a lot brighter. I would not recommend using paper um so this is 80 pound cardstock that i'm like this this right here um 
and I wouldn't even paint on that. The, 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 the liquid from the paint is going to cause your paper to warp. So I would not recommend painting on paper, at least not dotting on paper. I see, I see. Yeah, I feel like I need to add a little bit of like a yellowy tone as well in here. I'm just kind of mixing, a, like getting a bunch of colors for it. Yeah, I just wouldn't recommend it. It's going to warp your paper. If you wanted to paint on like something paper like maybe um, like if you're doing maybe like a the inside of like a picture frame, like paint on like a glass panel, you know, or something. All right, I think, I think we got a nice little dispersion of colors. All right, we got two hours, two hours to paint. Hello, hello, how are you? All right, so here are the colors that I'm using. I know there's a little bit of a glare, but I think, I think we're pretty, pretty decent. I think I covered most of it. It's going to be a scattered mandala. So, you know, the colors are going to be a little bit everywhere. Yeah, I think so. Well, maybe. Are you, I, this might be you probably. Are you Beth? Is, am I just like now putting that together? <laughs> <laughs> um, I got into this when I got let go from my job in March of 2021 and I really just needed a hobby <laughs> and um, I've always admired like the dotted rocks and stuff and it was just never something that I like thought that I would ever do uh, but then I just really needed a hobby so I, uh, I decided to grab some paint and I basically paint everything besides rocks. <laughs> yes, this is yours. So um, I was kind of using the pictures of your dragons to kind of get um, a little bit of a color scheme going. I didn't mean to put this gray here, so we're not going to use that color. This is like a pearly gray, uh, pearly color. So it's like a, it's really pretty. It looks like kind of sandstoney, uh, and the rest are flat. And a couple other colors. Did you want any others mixed into it? Like a cream? Do you want like me to add some cream colors too? Or um, do you like those colors? Yeah, I haven't. I don't, I don't do rocks yet. <laughs> yeah, I know. You keep saying that. Eventually, like I do want to do some. But the rocks just were just something that I've never done, you know. Well, that's a lie. I've done them like a couple times, but they're not something that I like stuck with. All right. Sounds good to me. So this is a scattered mandala method. So we're going to do a couple like scattered partial mandalas and then we're going to fill it in with dots. So instead of it being like, um, like these ones. So instead of it being like these, where you see that it's just like one big mandala, um, it's going to be like the rabbit where we have the, the mandalas in here and then we fill in all the space with the dots. Kind of like that one too, I guess, sort of, but yeah, so that's what we're going with. Yeah, and then um, I'll probably go in with some other colors for like top dots, like maybe some some metallics to kind of bring it out and lighten it up a little bit. But I think that's a good start on colors. I think. Let 
Alrighty. Here we go. So I'm gonna start on the head first, just to see how far we can, like, how far it goes out, and then I'll plan out these ones. But we'll start with the head. I'm trying to think what kind of one I wanna do. Ooh, pretty. Those would be really pretty. I wish I lived closer to a beach. I really, I really, really do. So this scattered uh, mandala method is not um, mapped out or anything. It's all free-handed. And I already want to move that dot anyways because I don't like where I put it. <laughs> It's fine. I think I want it a little bit more centered. It's like it never even happened. <laughs> so while I wait for that to dry, let me, let me answer. For a beginner, what material shape pattern would you recommend starting with? So for a beginner, definitely not anything like crazy shape wise. I would definitely start with, you know, something either like circular or square, you know, um, or, you know, something like a paw print where you don't have to really like focus on the, if you wanted to start with a mandala, you don't have to, but like, if you wanted, if you didn't want to really have to focus too much on like the symmetry you know because that can be really hard when you're just starting so sometimes starting on something that isn't symmetrical to begin with is helpful because even if it's off center it's still gonna look okay because it's you know not a symmetrical piece um i would i usually recommend instead of doing jumping into mandalas right away um i recommend doing something called i call it scattered dotting <laughs> <laughs> and basically it's just you're coloring something in sorry I'm trying to walk slow so I don't make you guys dizzy it's like you're coloring something in with a bunch of dots so for this for example it's it has a resin coat on it so I'm not going to open it up but you can see that there are a bunch of dots everywhere and um it kind of helps you like get close to the dots um and it just you learn how to control your tools and sorry I have a hiccup the amount of paint that you're using um, will help you, you know, will help set you off on a good foot to get into mandalas, if that makes sense. The, yeah, the wood circles are good too. If you're good at drawing line work, I'm not. So I don't, <laughs> I don't really don't ever paint like circular things. Um, but if you're really good at doing line work, you can definitely start on something circular. But yes, definitely something flat, something that doesn't have too much of a curve to it. So there are um, a handful of different dots, uh, or dots, that um, tools that you use to make dots. Some people do paint brushes for swooshes, um, but for the most part, there are ballpoint dotting tools and acrylic rods. So I have, I actually sell a starter kit on my website and it comes with three full um, sets of tools and then a handful of other little like single tools and things that'll be helpful so um, for instance these are your straight dotting tools you can see that they have the little ball points at the end um, it comes in five different ones the bottom ones are pretty much the same size there's a couple that are like extra small but these first three are the same these ones are a little bit smaller but you can see hopefully if the hollow is not bugging you too much this one is like the biggest one in the set so these are your pretty standard dotting tools um i also curve my dotting tools uh because i think it's a little bit easier to handle and honestly if i was just starting out i wish i would have like you know known about these but um, you can use both easily. It's not going to matter. But my toolkit sells both of these. So you get a straight pair and a curved pair. 
And then for bigger dots, it's um, acrylic rods. So mine look different than the ones that I sell because <laughs> they're very much loved. Uh, but these are flat on the end and you can see that they have a bunch of different sizes. So you can you know, get a bunch of different size dots that your other dotting tools are too small for. So those are your main ones that you're gonna want. You don't have to purchase them from me. Like I said, I do sell them all together, but you can get them on Amazon and a bunch of other places too. This is wood. So when I do wood, um, it depends on how smooth it is. So for example, I buy some from somewhere that they prep their wood pretty well. Their wood is nice and kind of uh, sanded down. So like here is, here's a blank paw print. Um, it's pretty smooth, but rule of thumb, don't always assume that it's perfect. <laughs> um, I always sand it down. So I actually just got this from Walmart the other day because I keep like sanding my nails and I don't like doing it. But anyways, I'll just take this and I'll just in circular motion sand. You can just use regular sandpaper too, but I just sand, you know, in a circular motion over my wood. Um, just, you know, I don't take too much off, but you can see that like, you know, it's a little bit smoother. And then after that, I'll brush it off and then I will go and I will paint it with two coats of just, I use regular deco art Americana, um, personally, because I don't like the glare that it gives from the light, but you can use multi-surface paint. You can use gesso, you can use all of it, but you don't have to paint the wood, but painting on a black background or a dark background tends to work out a little bit better. Um, it works better with the colors. When you do a light or a white background, you're going to see all of the spaces um, and it's just going to look unfinished. So like, what, what's the term? Black absorbs white reflects, right? And I wish I could show you a white painting, but I don't have one because <laughs> I don't like it. <laughs> but yeah. The sander is really nice. Um, I really liked it. I bought it actually yesterday. Not going to lie. It's been so much better than just regular sandpaper. All right. So round two. Let's try it again. Oh, that's pretty neat. How cool is that? Yeah, sanding the tumblers. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if this would help you. Have you ever made, um, like, I'm assuming, well, so I know that, do you have a Cricut? Um, I've seen people, like, use Cricut and cut out, like, little pieces of like leather it's a it's a bearded dragon um they've cut out like little teardrops of like the leather or something and made like earrings and stuff into that um my place sorry i was holding my breath <laughs> uh when i was doing that dot is that if that is if that's what you were talking about but um the place that i get my resin from resin rockers they actually just came out with a new resin a new resin formula um, for specifically painting on things that, um, are bendable. So I haven't tried it yet, but it might be something to look into if you're like doing that kind of jewelry and you want to dot on it as a good way to like preserve it, um, and protect the paint. So this is a little sample of it. Again, I haven't used it, but I've heard good things about it. It's called soft coat UV resin. And so um, it's, a, it's a shiny resin coat, but it, it allows you to seal something that will like, that is bendable. So if you do like a leather bookmark or, you know, like the leather jewelry and stuff. So that might be something to get into if you're, you know, wanting to dot paint on like jewelry like that and you don't want to use like resin, maybe using like a leather or something. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. 
but yeah. It would definitely be something that if I were you, I would test out a little bit, like painting on them, uh, the paper, um, before you like, you like make jewelry with dot art to sell. I would definitely test it out. Um, I don't recommend painting on paper, but you know, maybe if you get like a heavy paper, it might be okay. Um, this is 80 pound cardstock, so heavier than the paper that you mentioned earlier. I don't know. I feel like it's still not, not heavy enough. Um, because you know, it still like soaks up liquid, you know what I mean? So I just don't know if using paper, especially as like a, a base to paint for like earrings or whatnot would work that well. But it's always worth a shot. So if I were you, I would just get like heavier paper. Yeah, because it's going to soak in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Um, she was, uh, they were talking about painting on paper. Um, and I was telling them that I'm, my background that I have is 80 pound cardstock and I wouldn't even paint on it anyways. Like it's just not heavy enough. So, um, but my wood that I paint on is typically quarter inch. You can do like an eighth inch. Some places only do eight inch, eight inch like thickness and that's fine. Um, I, like I said, I've painted on eight inch thickness, uh, pieces of wood before. In fact, like, uh, the butterfly and the dog that we were resining, those are both eight inch. The resin's going to make it a little bit thicker and stuff, but typically I do quarter inch. I just, I, I prefer the thickness of it. Yeah. The turquoise is 80 pounds. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like maybe, um, now this is holographic. So like, I don't know. But this seems a little coated, so maybe if you could get like a, do they have like a metallic black, maybe? I haven't looked, but I know that there's a couple different metallic colors of like cardstock. Now that is, I don't think it's 80 pounds. It's 65 pound cardstock paper, but maybe you could try that. Not yet. I, it's something I want to do. Um. I'm just still kind of planning it out, but maybe, hopefully the plan is this year, I'll at least be able to hold a couple classes. You know, there might be a couple like practice classes that you guys will um, be able to attend and tell me like what I did well, what I didn't do well, things like that. <laughs> but um, I haven't done any yet, no. Typically my tutorials are on... Um, on TikTok live and it's more so just me painting and then if you guys ask me questions I'll answer what I can and yes to answer the question that I saw and then it went away um I am making my designs up as I go um all of my designs are like stored in my head and they've all just come from my head and what makes them like all different from each other is just me just doing them um and I'll kind of like piece them together. You know, I'll take certain things that I like from one design and certain things from a different design and then I'll merge them together in a new design. Um, and then I just kind of, every once in a while, I'll just try new things. And if I like it, great. If I don't, then, you know, it's it sucks with what I'm doing, but <laughs> I won't do it the next time, you know. I am in Pittsburgh, PA. Born and raised Pittsburgh girl. Thanks. I try and uh, I try and make sure that everything's like as transparent as possible. You know, um, it was more by choice for myself that like I didn't watch any YouTube videos or, you know, really like get in close with any creators um, to learn dotting from. I taught myself. Like I'm completely self-taught. And so there were a lot of things that I, you know, I learned over the time, you know, I mess up and, you know, I'll, I won't do it again. But I learned from my mistakes pretty much the entire time I was teaching myself. And I'm st I still learn from my mistakes all the time. I'm nowhere near perfect. There's still a lot of things that 
I am intimidated by and I haven't done and don't know if I'm going to do, you know, things like that. I just kind of take little baby steps here and there. Like, for example, um, the animals, the scattered mandala method, which you're going to be seeing me doing was something that I came up with for these. Um, but there were some other pieces that are like the full mandalas. I did not come up with that originally at all. Um, one of, I don't know if Sharon's in here, but one of my regulars, <laughs> she ordered something and was like, I'm going to push you out of your comfort zone. I want this, you know, and she sent me some inspiration pictures and I said, uh, okay. And, um, it turned out really, really well. And I actually really liked it. So then I started doing it on other pieces. The Pitbull portrait. Oh, she is here. Hello, Sharon. The pit, the Pitbull portrait that we were resonating earlier. That was another one that I don't do portraits, but they had asked me to do it. <laughs> and I said, I will try. Um, so, yeah, I usually stick to the same thing and, you know, change it up as I feel like it. But then I have a nice little push from some people in here sometimes to get me to to do some other different things. <laughs> hello, hello, how are you? Good afternoon. But yeah, I mean, the technique and everything is all self-taught. And I might do things a little bit differently, but like, I, I sometimes I wonder if it's working smarter, not harder type of thing. <laughs> Um, so I never, I, I, that's actually like newer to me with the scattered mandala method. I actually always left black for a while. So here's my, um, one that I did like sometime last year where I just did a few different mandalas and left it black. Um, and then this one, I don't know, this might've been the first or second one. I can't remember, um, of this year. And I decided to fill it in and see what happened. And we actually like really liked it. So I've just kind of just been doing it like that ever since. Sometimes I struggle um, with stopping, you know, because sometimes when you see all that black, you're like, oh, it's not done. It's not finished. Um, and you want to just keep going. So that's kind of like what happened. Oh, no, I actually was doing cats and dogs. That's 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 the first one that, that I did. But yeah. So I don't do them just black anymore unless like specifically requested, <laughs> but you banged your head. Oh no. Are you all right? How'd that happen? I, I hit my head pretty hard today too. <laughs> um, I was cleaning my, um, my fridge a little bit, like just, you know, taking out like old lunch meat, putting new, new lunch meat, you know, in the drawers. And I was sitting on the floor doing it. And when I stood up, I hit my head on like the handle of the freezer. Oh my God, <laughs> that hurts so bad. Um, so I feel your pain, but thankfully I just, I just have a bump now. No, no headache. So hopefully your head starts to feel a little better. Yeah, I definitely recommend starting off like, you know, small, um, like smaller, not like tiny because, you you know, but don't bite off more than you can chew. You know, if you don't hop right into mandalas, that's totally OK. Sometimes just, you know, using dots to color things in is super, super helpful. It helps you kind of develop the the coordination um, and really get to learn your tools because, you um, you know, there's a bunch of different little sizes of the of the dotting tools. So the more that you use them, the more that you're going to kind of get to know like, oh, I need to go for this size tool because, I, you know, this is the dot that's, you know, going to fit. Um, and also like it gives you the time to kind of play around with your paint. So like there's different like pressure, I guess that I use, like, depending on what tool I'm using, how big of a dot that I want, things like that. Sometimes I need more paint. Sometimes I need less paint. So you kind of, I would definitely recommend taking some time to just get to know that kind of stuff and kind of learn that part first because that's really going to set you up for 
success, you know? I definitely jumped right into it, and I was super freaking frustrated. I tried to mandala right away, and I just, like, I, I, I hated it. Um, I, I tried so hard, and it just felt like didn't matter how many hours that I was painting, I was just never happy with the outcome. And after about, you know, a couple weeks, I was just like, I'm not getting any better. I'm, I'm just going to find a different hobby. <laughs> My fiance's like, uh, absolutely not. No way. Nope. You, uh, you're not going to be great right away. Like you're just, you know, you're silly if you think that, like, you're not going to be amazing at every single thing that you start right away. You're going to need to practice. Um, and he was like, also like you spent a lot of money on, on stuff. So like, no. <laughs> um, and he basically convinced me to keep at it. And I, I did. And, you know, not even two years later, here I am. You know, I, I still have a lot to learn, a lot to figure out, different techniques, you know, all that kind of stuff. But I am way, 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 way different than I was when I first started. So it's all about practice and just really giving yourself that time to mess up a lot um, and just like not getting that mad at yourself. Like you're going to make some things that you hate. <laughs> Like, that's just what's going to happen. Um, but take it more as, like, a learning experience. You know, if you don't like it because you have a bunch of dots that are running together, you know, take it as a learning experience and, you know, be a little, like, focus a little bit more on that portion of dotting, you know. Try and get dots as close together as you can get them without having them run together, you know. And sometimes it's just kind of a matter of figuring out what paint that you're using, too. I went through... So many paint, uh, so many bottles of paint, um, brands of paint, trying to figure out what worked well for me. Um, and I eventually settled on Deco Art Americana and I almost exclusively use Deco Art Americana unless I'm using like a specialty paint. So something like um, a metallic paint or, or, you know, something like that. But regular just matte paints like this, um, I pretty much exclusively only use Deco Art Americana. And that's because I like the consistency of it the best. I think it works well for me. But some people like multi-surface. Some people like folk art. Some people, you know, like everybody's different. Um, but a lot of people like Deco Art Americana um, or folk, folk art multi-surface. Again, it just depends on what you're painting and, you know, what you like consistency wise. But those are the two like really big ones. And those are also like... The brands that you can find at the paint stores or the the craft stores the tool that i'm using right now is a ballpoint dotting tool or like a nail art tool um dot artists we use nail art tools <laughs> um but they're just like little they have they're like little metal metal uh tipped rods basically so this has like a little ball at the end and that's what you use to make your dots but there's a ton of different ones um, but I mean, not a ton of different ones, but you know, there, there's a few different ones. Um, so the, this one is, um, actually like, um, my most expensive tool. I need to take better care of them. I really need to clean these. Um, this is, this came in a set of four for like 20 some dollars. So like there's nothing special about them other than the fact that they're rainbow. Um, and I got those online from, an influencer that I used to watch on YouTube. <laughs> um, but I do use my own tools as well. Um, I have the straight tools. I have the curved tools um, and all the acrylic rods. So I do use the tools that I have, but I have a bazillion different tools. Um... Most of the time I go for a glossy. I, I really like a glossy finish. Um, matte is fine sometimes, but typically um, more often than not, it winds up just being a nice glossy, glossy finish, whether it be resin or um, like a high gloss kind of varnish type thing. But yeah, most of the time it's glossy. I'll do matte every once in a while, but it just it doesn't give me that same feeling, you know? The glossy um, varnishes and, and resin and stuff, they really brighten your colors. So when your paints dry, these, these dry matte, um, and so the colors will kind of darken up just a little bit. 
but whenever you add the resin or like a varnish to it, it'll bring them back to life. Um, usually about an hour to an hour and a half, I would say, if I, you know, I've never like truly timed it, but I would say about an hour, sometimes an hour and a half, depending on how like large my dot is. Um, like I would say that it's not going to be fully dry, but we'll work on another mandala, like in a different spot after I finish this one. And once I finish that second one, I'll be able to go back to it, this one, and add top dots. So um, it'll take probably about like in uh, 45 minutes or so for me to be able to like put like more paint on top of it, like do a top dot. Uh, but acrylic paints dry relatively fast compared to some of the other paints, like, you know, like an oil paint or whatever. Um, they'll be dry, you know, within an hour or two. Um, like you can touch them, all that kind of stuff. But yeah, the thicker the dot of paint, the bigger the dot of paint, the longer it's going to take to dry. But it's never going to take like, you know, a day to dry or anything. You know, it'll, you know, maybe take an hour or so longer than normal. Oh, did I answer it? <laughs> yeah, the glossy resin finish is just so freaking pretty. Um, I would only do it sometimes. Like I would use resin if I was doing jewelry and like keychains and stuff. And then I would use like a glossy like top coat if I was painting on like a canvas or, you know, even like a piece of wood. But lately I've been like using resin for like most of my stuff because I just I've been really digging the way that it looks and I just think it looks like super high quality and beautiful. Nope. Yeah, I, I like to do the small things a lot of the times because, you know, I can finish them faster. Um, and honestly, a lot of my stuff, I'll work all the way through it. You know, I, I don't I don't really work on like multiple things at a time unless I'm painting Christmas ornaments. Sometimes I'll paint like one or two or two or three at the same time um, or like badge reels, like keychains. I'll paint a couple of these at a time. But yeah, for the most part, I don't really jump around too, too much. Um, the tool that I'm using is um, one of the ballpoint dotting tools. This is just from like a different brand. So they look different than your regular ones. Um, it's comparable to probably this one. They're just different colors. More expensive. <laughs> hello, hello. Resin rockers. Yep. Um, I have resin rockers linked in my bio. Um, I, I don't know if I'm like affiliated with them. I don't really know what the word is, but, um, I do have a, a discount code for resin rockers. If anybody's interested in trying out their resin, um, it's linked in my bio. It's like a pay, like a, like a code that's kind of associated with that link. So you like have to go through it, um, in my bio, but it gets you like 5% off or something, which isn't, you know, it's not much. It's better than nothing, you know? Uh, but yeah, I highly recommend resin rockers. They're my, they're my favorite. I use them for like my regular resin and I use them for like UV resin as well. <laughs> my favorite person is back. I know it sucks, but you know, um, I focus on the way it looks in the end and with dot art, you have to enjoy it, you know, and if you're, at least for me, if I'm focusing on all the little teeny tiny little details, I'm going to like get really pissed off at myself and I'm not going to enjoy it, you know, so most of the time when there's like little discrepancies between, you know, the pattern, and this happens a lot when it's free handed like it is now, I'm not using any line work, I'm completely just free handing it. There's going to be spots that it doesn't match up as well as the other spots. But whenever you get more of a design onto what it is that you're painting, whether it be like more just mandalas or you just bring the design outwards, it's going to like disappear. You're not going to notice it, but you'll, you'll notice it as you're doing it. But in the end, it's not going to matter. No reason to stress over the tiny little things that 
are just so in insignificant. You're left-handed. Yeah, so I'm right-handed, but I found this little thing at the dollar store and it just, it came with like these little pads because, um, anyways, I think it was like a waxing kit for like a car. Um, I wish I don't know where it is, but it, it's like this little like hammock. It's like this foam thing that you can set your wrist in. I, I, that's not what it's for, but that's what I was using it for. And I wonder if using something like that might help you because yeah, I, my, my sister is left-handed. So Growing up, I, you know, she would always get pissed off because she'd spread the ink from her pen across her paper and stuff. So, um, I mean, sometimes I even have to kind of like hover to paint, but I, I, I set my hand out. It's no different than you doing it with your left hand. You just have to be careful of where you're putting it. I feel like. Oh yeah. How pretty. so so pretty you guys jackie jackie's pregnant <laughs> Woohoo! she's expecting again <laughs> welcome back welcome back you're a lefty jen how uh how is it for you is it much different Sorry, I'm eating, um, well, I'm drinking boba, but chewing on the little boba pearls. I felt special. She, um, she messaged me, she messaged me on Instagram the other day or yesterday. I was like, I'm finishing telling my, my family tonight. And I wanted to be like, you told me before some of your family? What? <laughs> Dude, I can't, I can't knit or crochet. I cannot do that to save my life. Zero percent. Cannot do it. So I would say that, yeah, you probably have a good chance at being decent at this. <laughs> it is a bearded dragon. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, just rotate. Yeah, I mean, I have to do that too with mine, you know? We have a couple people. I don't know if Lisa, the other Lisa, not Lisa B, the other Lisa. <laughs> she usually crochets when she watches me. So we don't all have to be dot artists in here. We just kind of hang out and have fun and talk. Um, and then I'll like teach you guys things if you want me to. But this is mostly just like a, a really chill, um, like live hangout is usually what this tends to, tends to become. So, um, you know, we don't stress over the little things in here so um little disclaimer if anybody's new here and they're looking for a dot artist that does things freaking perfectly um i'm not your girl <laughs> i do things to enjoy it and i don't you know sweat the little things so <laughs> but if you want to have fun and, and see some pretty stuff that might not be 100 percent perfect or symmetrical i'm your girl Oh, big girl job. <laughs> Wait, why? Which, which, what reason? The one where we have fun or what? That I'm not perfect and I don't expect anyone else to be perfect either. We just got to enjoy it. <laughs> we yeah i mean i i've heard that a lot of twins usually like the, i mean I, the twins that i knew a lot of them one was lefty one was righty um but my dad's left-handed my mom's right-handed so i don't know if that has anything to do with it either but we're identical twins i don't know about a mirror twin but um 
I don't think so. <laughs> I am awesome. I'm just saying, if you're expecting, you know, you know, if your OCD is going to go crazy because things aren't symmetrical, I'm just not the girl for you. <laughs> Yep. Yep. We just want to hang out. Um, I really like the company of like the little community that I've built. I really like talking to people. I mean, this, this is my job, you guys. Um, before this I was working in like, you know, restaurant customer service type of stuff. You know, I'm kind of a social butterfly, but I'm also like super freaking awkward at the same time. Um, (laughs) surprisingly, but being alone painting all day every day I love it but it's lonely and my cat he only you know he can only help so much right so like when when it's not summer like my sister she's a teacher so when it's um summertime like we either like hang out a lot or like talk on the phone like a lot you know but when she's not when she's, when she's working, I don't have anyone to talk to. So I really do like going live because it just kind of, it helps me feel a little social, you know? Huh, that's interesting. Yeah, I'm not sure why my sister is, like, if, if she learned anything from my dad or not, or that's just how she was. I don't know. But I always did think it was funny that she was left-handed and I was right-handed. And that we were twins. You are! Hooray! So, not so much on, like, like a shirt or, like, a, like a, a tote or anything. But I really want to do some canvas shoes. You know, just get, like, a cheap pair from Walmart to start out with. You know, the ones, like, that look like the vans, like the slip-on vans, but, like, aren't. You know, just in case I mess up. But um, I do want to do shoe a pair of shoes. One of these, you know, maybe this year sometime. There's a lot of things that I want to do. It's just, like, finding the time to, like, actually do it, you know. Um, but... I saw some like textile medium, which I think is kind of like a fabric medium where you can like mix it in with your paints. Um, I mean, acrylic paints are like permanent, but you know, I don't necessarily trust that they would be 100% great by themselves on like some canvas. So I wanted to kind of try and figure that out. In fact, I was staring at it today when I went to the craft store. I was like, should I buy some soon? I don't know, but... But yeah, I do want to do a pair of shoes just to see how it turns out because I think that would look really neat. <laughs> You're ambidextrous. I wonder like what makes people like choose to write with their left hand or not, you know? Because, I mean, I don't remember learning how to write or anything. So, like, I don't remember if it just, like, felt normal to pick it up in my right hand. And that's why I'm a righty. But I don't know about you, but my Goodwill, their shoes are are freaking grody and gross. Um, Plus, I feel like if if I'm going to do them... I want to, like, make them for myself, you know, so that I can wear them around and test them out and stuff. And, you know, if it happens to be something that I bring to you guys, then great. But I want to get a pair that, like, are in decent condition that I can wear out and about and test them, you know, test test the product. But, oh, I just stuck my hand in paint. I'm not worried about it. Well, we're not stretch- stressing the little things. I'll fix that in a second. But yeah, I mean, Walmart shoes, they're not they're not that expensive, you know? I don't think. I just would hate to buy a pair of, like, black vans and then <laughs> destroy them on accident with paint.
Oh, Dollar General. I'm trying to think of like where a Dollar General is near me. Like, I don't, I don't know. They closed the one by my parents. And I'm not sure where another one is. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely something that, like, is worth trying for sure. I just, um, I also have to kind of figure out how to prep it, how to prep the surface, too. Because the shoes are gonna, the, the, it's kind of like painting on a canvas. You'll see the, the canvas underneath, you know? So I want to find something that I can use to kind of prep it to make it more of, like, a smooth surface. Things like that. Oh, that's interesting. Oh uh, yeah, I'll have to I'll have to look and see. Cause I, I have a Dollar Tree over here, but it's not the fancy Dollar Tree where you know there's things more than a dollar twenty five. It's just the basic dollar twenty five tree. What is it? Dollar Tree and Limb? Is that is that like what the new ones are called? Um, also, a kind of thought for those of you guys who um, are thinking about trying dot art. Sometimes doing stuff like this, you can see that it's a partial mandala, um, is nice because, you know, it's you don't have to work on it being, like, fully circular. So if it's, like, off-center or, you know, one end goes in one area and then it's shorter on one side, it's still fine, you know, it just kind of helps you practice the dot art part of things, you know? I did, yeah, we started off doing the resin tutorial. We did it for about 45 minutes. Started right at two. That would be pretty, huh? Yeah, I don't know. Um, I'd have to see. Like, I feel like there's some type of, like, fabric like primer maybe type of painting thing oh no yeah I was trying to wait for most people to get on but we'll have to do it again some other time then I couldn't remember who it was that specifically asked for it so I was just hoping that everybody who wanted to watch it was on. I'll keep an eye out for some cool candles for you. Yes, I will. I will. Well, um, I'm going to be uploading it uh, to YouTube. Um, Terry asked me to specifically upload this one to YouTube, like the, the resin portion of it to YouTube. So if I get to it tonight or maybe over the weekend, something like that, I'll, I'll upload it on YouTube. So it'll be on my YouTube at some point. Oh, okay, yes. You guys look, watch. I bought something today. Yep. I have my YouTube linked in my bio, too. Fresh new practice canvas. Woohoo! Yeah, it's either Jay Gron's or Jay Gron's daughter, but it's, it's linked in my bio. All right, walking dots. I must have missed that, but here we go. Walking dots. Um, 
I'm trying to kind of get a little different angle. This is just a chibi canvas. Um, it's replacing it's replacing this this practice canvas that I use for you guys. So <laughs> we have a new a new canvas. All right. Oh yay! Thank you. So walking dots. Um, one of the most important things about walking dots is that you don't want to double dip. So what I mean by double dipping is, well, let me get a big dot on first so I can, I guess, have a good, a good thing to start with. All right, so. That's gonna be a weird angle for me, but you guys will get the idea, okay? Even if it doesn't look that great. Oh God. Starting off strong. Okay, pretend that's a perfect circle. <laughs> so, okay, for walking dots. For me, so I do like one nice top dot, right? Right in the center, okay? And so like the, the walking dots are gonna go on either end, okay? So it doesn't matter how many times you double dip for that, you just want like a nice, you know, a nice plump dot. And then for the walking dots, you're gonna dip do the same one you're gonna dip once try not to double dip because the walking dots kind of happen because um you like as you walk your tool you're gonna have less and less paint at the tip of your tool okay so after you do your first dot try not to double dip so hopefully this sorry we zoomed in but do you guys see how much paint I have on the edge of my tool? Like, it's kind of just like, it's way more than I should normally have, okay? But um, I don't, like, pretend that there's paint on this. I don't, like, when I'm walking dotting, I'm not going like that. I'm not putting much pressure, okay? Um, I only start to really, like, put my tool really, really down onto the surface um, when I get towards the end and there's less paint, right? So I'm kind of water dropling ro water dropleting and this canvas is like shitty quality but you'll get you'll get the point now i'm starting to kind of bounce my tool because i have less and less paint on the tip of my tool so you can see that i didn't go back in for seconds this entire time right so then i dip again to start the other side kind of let it water droplet not really like i'm barely touching the canvas touching it a little bit but like there's really no pressure and then it's just kind of natural that as you go from big to small, it just, the, the, the tool runs out of paint. Literally, I'm not doing anything besides just dotting. Now, if you, I'm gonna zoom back out a little bit. Now, if you double dip, here's what kind of happens. So let's say, I, I'm starting to run out of paint prematurely, for example. If I go back in, it's, and I was exaggerating because I wanted to make a point, it's bigger, okay? So you're not gonna get that like seamless big to small. Now, I'm not saying that if you have to double dip, it's always gonna happen. Like I'm gonna double dip now and I'm gonna like try really hard to kind of keep it small and not make it too big. Like it's possible to still get a decent walking dot if you have to go back in for paint, but it's, that was my elbow, I promise. Uh, <laughs> um, it's much easier if you just do it right at the beginning. More paint to start with will keep you from running out of paint. And I kind of like scoop to where like my paint is like kind of dripping off, you know? And it all depends um on like where I'm trying to walking dot so like if I'm doing a small area I'm going to use a smaller tool for it but the technique is the same where I whoop, where I scoop with more paint here's a smaller dotting tool but it's the same technique just smaller dots so hopefully that helped and while we're on the topic because I tend to always just kind of jump into both of this both of these. Let's talk about real fast doing the acrylic dotting tools, the, the acrylic rods. 
So when people use the acrylic rods, most of the, their mistake that they make is that they're not using enough paint, okay? So I'm like barely dipping my tool and you can see, hopefully, it's really not that nice. You know, it's kind of like uneven. It's kind of just like, you know, it kind of blows out, right? And another thing is that if I use more paint, which is fine, whatever, we'll just go right here, <laughs> I guess. Um, I'm not, if you just like press all the way down, do you see how the paint squishes out and it's a bigger dot than what your tool's making? When you pull up, it's just not gonna be that great of a dot. So what I do, no, I don't add anything to my paint. Not usually, nope. Straight out of the bottle, unless I'm like adding um, a pearlizing medium to it to make it like sparkly-ish. Okay, so with the acrylic rods, I get a lot of paint on my tool. Look how much paint there is, okay? Lots of paint. Let, more is better, all right? And I am slowly pressing down just till I can see that the dot that I'm making is the size of the tool that I'm using. And then I pull up. So you get a much rounder dot than you would if you just... Also, if you do that, you'll kind of get a little nipple in the middle, which, I mean, it's fixable. You just have to kind of go in with more paint. But I, I start off with more paint for my acrylic rods. More paint, less pressure, and you'll get much better, much nicer looking dots than like the ones that kind of start to get a little wrinkly, you know? Like you can kind of see that these ones are wrinkly. These ones are nice and rounded. So those are my two like beginner tricks. <laughs> All right, back to the bearded dragon. I hope that helped. Flip my napkin, because it's totally paint covered. I like moved everything around. <laughs> All righty. Do I have advice on the acrylic tools or what? Oh gosh. Yep, yeah, that's what most people do is they, they apply too much pressure to their, their tools. And it, it ha it's even more noticeable when you're using a big dot or a big tool, like a big daughter. Um, no. Not usually. Sometimes, like, it depends on what I'm painting. Sometimes I'll go with colors that I feel, like, go well with it. Like, um, for example, the, the, the giraffe right there, I used colors that were, like, similar to a giraffe color and, like, you know, a fluffy orange cat, um, or, like, the green turtle, things like that. Um, or I'll like go off of like the colors that I'm like feeling, you know, painting with. Like sometimes like I'm drawn to blues and purples. So if I don't have like an idea for like what color scheme I want to use, a lot of the times I'll just pick purples and blues and teals and put them together because <laughs> that is uh, that's my thing. Um, but I have a couple like books that were um, given to me by one of my followers. He's not in here right now, but he was uh, he went to school for art and he doesn't use the books anymore. So he sent them to me because I am not an artist. I mean, I am, but like I didn't go to school for it. You know, like all of this is just within the last two, two years of my life. So I learn a lot of things, but he sent me his books from school a long time ago, I guess. I think you did. Yeah. Didn't, didn't you like post them in my Facebook group, Jackie? So there are different, um, like books, they, the different levels, but they have a bunch of like different like colors that go well together. Um, I guess this is some type of color theory esque book. But it's just a good way to like kind of flip through. And if I'm not sure what colors to use, I'll use that. So this is the first one. And this is the second one. So like more like pastel colors, more like muted colors. And then like mixing like some lighter colors with some dark colors uh, and like things like that. 
mixing some colors with black. So this will just kind of give me, like if I'm not sure what colors look well together, sometimes I'll like, you know, kind of flip through these ones and maybe try a color scheme that I've never used before. This one's a little bit, I guess, more advanced, but still like you can see that there's a bunch of different colors in these. So that'll help me like, you know, just find some inspiration. Um, but a lot of the times I kind of just go with like what I'm feeling. And then this last one is just like a bunch of like color gradients, which is helpful. But mm -mm. nope, I don't use, I really don't use anything for color wise. I just kind of go with it. And if it looks great, wonderful. If not, it's just a learning experience, but like, I'm, I'm literally like the basic of the basic. Like I have like not much knowledge. I mean, I, I, I can see what looks well together, but, and like, I know like, you know, red, blue, and yellow are the, like the colors that you can't make, but you can mix blue and yellow together to get green. And, um, you know, the complementary colors were like what blue is across from orange on the color wheel and, like things like that. Like I know that stuff, but but yeah. Um, one of my biggest thing is like starting to paint with colors that I don't usually use. Um, it's something that I always have to kind of work on every day because I will always just go to the colors that I I love the best. You know what I mean? Um, but you know, when I have custom orders, sometimes I don't have to pick my colors, <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, and so that's like easy. Um, or like for this one, for example, um, I'm painting this for Beth and she has a bunch of bearded dragons and I asked her to like send me a bunch of pictures of them and they all look different, but I went through, I like flipped through the pictures and I picked out colors that kind of I found on like most of them or all of them or some of them you know to kind of kind of get this color palette you know to merge together so that whenever it's done um you know the colors look like for the most part colors on like bearded dragons even if the pattern isn't the same my favorite color is green but you wouldn't know it if I didn't tell you that <laughs> Because nowadays, um, I love like bright blue, like freaking neon, br neon blue, bright blue. That is like my favorite color. My hair was like freaking neon blue for a while. My, my car before my like car that I have now, but my other car was like bright blue. Um, so I really like blue and purple. So like as an adult, I probably would say that's, those are my favorite colors but I feel wrong for um, like not saying my favorite color is green because it's like I grew up with my favorite color <laughs> being green. Hey, Tom. Thanks. I just got my nails done on Wednesday. We got, got rid of the Valentine's Day nails. It's resin. Hi. <laughs> I know, I feel like I'm cheating on green, exactly. So I feel like I still always have to say, well, technically my favorite color is, in, is green, but here are the colors I like more right now. <laughs> I know I'm allowed to have more than one favorite color, but like, I feel like there's always one, you know, like the original like color. Like my sister, her favorite color is blue, you know? So I also feel like I can't have blue as my favorite color because... She'll be like, you're copying me. No, that's like an old thing. Like, no, she doesn't care anymore. But when we were younger, she probably would have been like, no, you can't like blue. Blue is my favorite color. It might be a twin thing. I don't know. But but yeah, I use resin um, on most of these pieces. I just think it's really fancy. Um, but um, you can use like a glossy varnish too, but you're just not going to get that glass-like finish. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so resin cures just fine on wood. Um, UV resin is where you want to be careful on wood. So UV resin, you need to seal it. And I'm not going to, I wouldn't use UV resin on something large like this because that's just going to use up a lot of it. But if I was using like, 
you know, I mean, this is, this is resin, but pretend that this is wood. I would use UV resin on something the size of like this or smaller, you know? Um, but when you're using UV resin on wood, you want to seal it because, um, it's going to go on clear and look fine. And then you're going to stick it under the light. And as it cures, um, it gets like cloudy. Um, I don't know if I, I hold on. I'm gonna have to look through my pictures. So someone posted it in one of my Facebook groups that I'm in and was like, why is this happening? And it was the resin. And I screenshotted it, not to like show her mistake, but to show you guys what I meant because I couldn't get it to happen. This is what happens with UV resin when you seal wood. If or when you don't seal wood. So if you just like painted a plain piece of wood, dotted over it, and then put UV resin over top of it and stuck it under the light, this is what happens. It's like the UV resin pulls out all of the air from the wood and then it cures that way. And there's nothing that you can do um, after it happens. Like it's done. It's you, know, you can't do anything about it. But yeah, so I saw someone post this and I was like, oh, I need to screenshot it because I need to show, I need to have it to show you guys. Um, but yeah, so you just have to seal it first. So resin, I mean, anything can be toxic or harmful, period. Like that's just how it is. But it's all kind of like the measures that you take to protect yourself, you know, um, using gloves, using a mask with a respirator. So not just like one of those masks that you like we wore out and about for COVID. Like you need one of those like hardcore ones, like the rubber ones with like the filters using those. So mask, um, gloves, long, wear, wear long sleeves, you know, like put on an apron, um, work in a well-ventilated area. So like open your windows if you can or work outside if you can or like in a shed or a garage or something like that um for me I really don't have that much space so like I do not do I, I don't take like a hundred percent proper precautions with resin because I, I can't and I no nope you need one of those like gas mask looking things <laughs> I, I, I'm like actively choosing not to like have a mask and not to work outside. That's me. And I'm telling you guys that I'm telling you like not to do, do it at your own risk. You know, I know that there's some resin people on here that like, you know, don't care and they don't tell you guys about it, but like I care, <laughs> you know, that's the wrong color. Um, but yeah, so you, there are proper precautions that you need to take and like every resin is different and everybody is different. So like my sister, she is, uh, she makes tumblers on the side and she has been doing tumblers and stuff for longer than I've been doing my, my art and painting and all that and using resin. And she started having an allergic reaction after, you know, a few years. Actually, um, you can find a relatively cheap mask on um, Amazon. They're not, they're not like hundreds of dollars or anything like that. Um, so like you don't have to like drop an arm and a leg just to get a, a mask. You know, you just want one with the filters. But um, I use um, airtight containers whenever I'm done with my resin. Um, like if I have a piece that I'm waiting to cure... I, I, I close them up in airtight containers and, like, keep them, like, kind of away from me as much as I can. And that protects, you know, more so than just leaving it out in the open and letting the, the fumes just kind of psh. Um, my hope is that, you know, the airtight containers help a little bit. And it'll also protect them from, like, dust and stuff like that, too. So I take some precautions. I don't take all the precautions, but, um, you know, at least I'm telling you guys. <laughs> what what you should be doing um what what what's what is the um what's the what's the saying do as i say not as i do or something <laughs> yeah look on amazon um it was from school a schooling from anthony but i want to see if it has the name maybe you'll be able to find it somewhere 
if you just like maybe look on eBay or something, but designer's guide to color. Um, I don't know, Chronicle Books. He got this when he was in school, so I'm not sure if these are just like accessible, like if you just wanted them or not, but yeah. I mean, honestly, um, you gotta live and enjoy life. <laughs> no, but I mean, resin isn't something to just like freely joke around with, you know, you do want to do your best to take precautions, you know, like in the summertime, um, I will, I'll still use like the airtight containers and stuff, but I'll move them outside, like in my like patio closet but I can't do that now because it's winter time and it's too cold. And so the resin won't cure if it's too cold. So like, it's not like I can always do that. So I'm a little bit like more precautious. Or I have the ability to be a little bit more cautious in the summertime because I'm able to like leave things outside and stuff. But in the winter time, there's really only so much I can do. So that's kind of why I started using the, um, the airtight containers because I felt like it helped a little bit. I never, I don't know what a color cube is. Bye. Have a good day. <laughs> Let me know if you pick out some names. I saw that and I did see that some some um, people were starting to like make videos about it just to kind of bring awareness to it. I did see that. I think it's crazy. So I've seen some people use resin on rocks before, but the thing with them is that like they're going to drip. So, you know, you're going to have to figure out a way to kind of fix the drips from the resin you know so like if you have a flat base maybe you could do um the liquid latex on the bottom that might work um but I, I i think most people use like a gloss varnish and like a triple thick and stuff like that um like i don't use triple thick i have it i just don't use it where is it um, it's just like a glossy medium that a lot of people like to use. I should start using it one day and just see, but it's like a brush on glaze. I know a lot of people use this. You just have to wait for a while for it to dry. Um, I would probably use, yeah, a spray on um, varnish. So like Krylon has a nice, clean, like high gloss, water resistant, UV resistant spray varnish. It's like a clear spray paint. Um, you just have to... So sorry, had to plug my phone in. Um, you just have to pay attention to what kind of paint that you're using. So when you use certain varnishes or like spray varnishes, painting varnishes, whatever, um, if you're using um, certain acrylic paints can be sealed certain ways. So multi-surface paints um, tend to be decent and fine, um, but they, they kind of cure on their own over <coughs> over time um regular acrylic paints you can use just fine like deco art americana um patio paints do not need seals so if you put a sealant over them the sides are going to start peeling um enamel and like ceramic type paints glass paints those are supposed to be baked to cure so like those probably won't do well with a varnish so you just have to know like what paint you're using type of thing. And I still make mistakes all the time. <laughs> so. Oh, cool. I'll have to look and see what I can find like on the app. Cause that'll be helpful. Cause yeah, I tend to just pick blue and purple if I don't know what I'm gonna paint. They're just my favorite colors to paint with. And I have the most, like, paint in blue and purple. I mean, I have a lot of paint in different colors, but I have a ton of blue and purples.
Yay! How exciting! <laughs> hope it's all good and safe <laughs> I do my best to package all my art as well as possible but you never know you never know yeah lots of blues Um, no, I actually don't. I don't seal it before I put resin. Nope. Only if I'm using UV resin, which isn't very often that I use UV resin ever on wood and basically never on something on this size. But no, just regular resin. Um, I don't seal it. I just go right in. Um, I will like I'll wipe off my guidelines if I have any, but no sealing. No sealing otherwise. Oh, yay! I'm glad. I'm glad. It's always fun to get mail. Um, I love mail. I don't care if it's something that I've ordered, you know? Like, I I love mail. Even if it's, like, Amazon or something. But, you guys, I ordered, um, and I bought it off Mercari. I overpaid for it because I wanted it. And I was kind of, like, I was having, like, FOMO, you know? Like, fear of missing out, I guess is what the kids say. They call it FOMO. <laughs> I don't know um but I was like afraid that I wouldn't be able to find it so like Marshall's TJ Maxx home goods they always have those fun blankets right and actually I was wrong because it wasn't from Marshall TJ Maxx or home goods it was from Ross but anyways I found a peeps blanket and I overpaid for it by like $20 because I know how much the Ross blankets are so like when I saw the raw sticker scraped off, I was like, God damn it. Like, I really overpaid for this. Uh, but anyways, I really wanted it. And I bought it on Mercari because I was afraid I wouldn't be able to find it. But it's a blanket um, and it's full. It has peeps all over it. And I'm super excited about it because those of you guys who have been following me, you guys know that I love peeps. I like have some weird obsession with peeps, especially like around like Easter time. Um, and so last year my decor in my like living room like apartment but mostly like my living room was peeps inspired so i had a bunch of peeps like things um and i got some more stuff for this year but anyways i got a blanket and it has peeps all over it and it just came in the mail today and i'm so excited yes i ha i actually bought some yesterday jen so last year for funsies i did a taste test here on tiktok you know, when I didn't feel like doing art, I just uploaded a, a video of me testing out like different flavored peeps stuff. Um, and it's still, I feel like it's a little early to do one of those videos. So I'm kind of collecting things right now to do another one of those for this year. So I do have the peeps one. I have the pe the peeps flavored Pepsi. It's in my fridge. It's not open, but I'm, I'm sure it'll be good for a little while longer. Um, I want to get the Dr. Pepper flavored peeps. I saw them, didn't buy them, and now I can't find them. So hopefully I can find them, you know, soonish. But yeah, I bought it. I just don't know what it tastes like yet. <laughs> it is a Verdi. Yep. Yes, it is. Really? I kind of figure, like, I... I I, I guess I didn't really, I don't really know, like, I didn't really truly know what to expect, but I had a feeling I probably am not going to like it enough. Um, because most of the time, the, like, flavored Pepsi or Coke drinks don't taste like what they say they're going to taste like. So, you know, I, I kind of have that knowledge that it's probably not going to taste like it, and it's probably just going to be some weirdly sweet pop but you know that's why I didn't get um the little mini like 12 pack cans you know so because that's all I could find for a while I couldn't find the single bottles but then I found the single bottles yesterday so I bought one and it's in the back of my fridge for you know a taste test probably probably next month sometime so I'll have some time to 
find some different peeps flavored things. Yeah, I'm making a bearded dragon. I'm using color references from a, a handful of pictures that I was given, so. Stale marshmallow and nastiness. I mean, I, I'm I'm not gonna, I, I'm, I'm telling you one thing, I'm not gonna be surprised if I don't like it, that's for sure. I mean, last year I spent all this time searching for the peeps soap that big lots had because that went viral and mine never had it so I, I like wound up driving like 45 minutes like away from my house so it was like an hour and a half both ways just to buy this peep soap okay and I tried it and it oh it smelled so bad it was just yucky I still have one under my sink but it smelled so bad that like I didn't even use it <laughs> like on my sink like usually I'll have like holiday soaps on my sink like in my kitchen but I just I was like it's just decoration nobody use it because it smells so bad you're having problems with swooshes is that is that what you mean by the line because I can show you how to do it on my practice canvas in a second Yes, that sounds so cool. Yeah, I'll show you because I have a couple different methods to do swooshes. So hopefully at least one of them will kind of help you. So while I'm finishing this part up, if you don't mind, um, what what are you um, struggling with with the with the swooshes? All right, do you like not have enough paint? Um, is it like <laughs> just like the shape of it or what what is your biggest issue with them oh that's so freaking neat that sounds so cool we don't have anything like that around here okay yeah, the shape can take a little bit of practice. Um, swooshes were not something that I immediately started with. <laughs> I went a couple months before I like actu actually like whoops got into swooshing. All right, so let's bring out let's bring out the handy dandy canvas again. So here's your dot that you're gonna swoosh with, or swoosh around, for example. I have, mm -hmm. yep, I have Peep's earrings and I have little like Peep like statues and I also have like a Peep like wall decor, yeah. Done quite a few Peep things. All right, so there are two ways that you can do swooshes, okay? So the first way is, um, I guess it doesn't really matter what color I use, using the same tool for your swoosh. So I start off with, just like the walking dots where you start off with like more paint. Start off with a bunch of paint at the top. And like you can either drag downwards or in one swoosh. Or you just kind of like little baby strokes to kind of get it where you want. So you're using the same tool. But you want to start off with like more paint to begin with okay so that's how you do it with one tool and I feel like the one tool method is like a little bit harder than if you were to do it this way so here's another way to do swooshes lots of lots of paint in your first dot you're gonna make like a, a, a dot okay then you're gonna take a pointy tool so um here are the, t I sell these tools on my website for 50 cents, but you can, you know, use anything. So I call this a swooshing stick. It's really just a plastic um, cuticle pusher. I like these because um, it's similar to like what a toothpick will do, but it's not going to dull out because it's plastic. So um, this way I think is a little bit easier because you're just, you know, you're doing your little teeny little, just you're dragging your dot and your, your swoosh into place but it gives you a lot more control 
about like where where the tail ends if that makes sense so start off with one dot use your little swooshing tool um, and you don't have to use this you can use um, I got this at Dollar Tree I think it's like it's in the art section I think it's some some type of like sewing sewing thing but any anything pointy will work and you just kind of you know drag your dot into place so one to one one there's a couple different methods for it you know you can do i didn't have enough paint but one tool obviously the canvas is really rough but you get what i mean um i think that's like the biggest thing is you want to start off with a lot of paint and just yeah the tool tool the two tool method really helps you be exact um so um, I kind of, I switch on and off. It just depends on what it is that I'm painting, how much room that I have, things like that. So, but yeah. Oops. So hopefully that helps you a little bit. Yeah, but I definitely did. I definitely started with two, two tools first. And then once I felt a little bit more comfortable, I started using one tool. But I still will use two tools you know, it just kind of depends on what it is that I'm doing. I'm trying to find a good position for this one. I'll probably just do another kind of full one right here. You are so welcome. I hope that helps you. I think it should. I think it'll help at least a little bit. Yeah, I didn't want to do one right here because it would just be annoying to try and like fit this, the other, like, you know, the bottom part in here. So I'm going to try and do like a little bit of a bigger one and then, uh, you know, fill it in otherwise. What time is it? Okay, we got like a half hour. I'm gonna get a drink because I ran out of drink and I'm thirsty. Everybody get up and stretch because I need to stretch too. Did everybody stretch? Crack your back if you need to, because I, I need to crack my back. Oh, did you guys hear that? That was my back. Oh, that felt so good. All right, I'm back. I got a um, a fake, well, it's not a fake energy drink. It's like a healthy energy drink. It's very yummy. <laughs> okay, I am back. I am back. Sometimes we don't realize how long we're sitting down, you know? I mean, I'll sit down for a couple hours at a time and not realize it. Yay! It looks pretty incomplete right now, but I promise. I promise trust the process. It'll, it'll come together. Um, I do this full time. I I had a job two years ago, and then I was let go. And um, in the three months that I like had as like severance, I was gonna find a new job, but I picked this up as a hobby. And I didn't realize how burnt out and like zombie zombie I was. Um, I didn't realize how much I like hated like doing my thing <laughs> every day. I freaking hated it. I'm so unhappy with my life. Um, when I picked this up, I 
like there was just so many positive things that happened for me that like just because you know and so my fiance is so freaking supportive and he was like I mean I'm not mad that you're home all the time because I was never home (laughs) um and he was like if you love what you do like you need to be your own boss why not try try to kind of do your own thing be an artist do like small business stuff you know like do that so that's what I'm doing and, you know, it's a struggle sometimes. Um, it's a freaking struggle to not, like, know if you're really going to have a paycheck. It's very scary. Um, but at the end of the day, I am so much happier than I was. I can't imagine. Like, I, I and I'm, I'm only 28. So I've been working since I was 14 till 26, which isn't very long, but... Um, I, uh, I can't imagine like working for someone else ever again. I just can't like, I, I, I'm one of those people that I work way too hard for my own good. And, um, you know, I'm, you're, you're expendable, you know, if it's not your, your business, like you're, you're pretty much expendable. Um, and so I kind of just decided that if I'm going to work a bazillion hours and, you know, all that kind of stuff, I'm going to do it for myself. And I'm like, I'm going to enjoy it. So kind of stepping out of my comfort zone and hoping that I don't just waste, you know, a few years of my life. But yep, I know that if I, if I, if I mean, I'll, I'll get a job if I need one, you know, um, I mean, I pull in like, okay, you know, okay money, not anywhere like what I was making, but I'm pulling enough money to support, you know, me and my fiance, like, you know, we make enough money to live like comfortably. Um, but if, if the time comes where like, I have to start pulling a little more weight than what I do, like I will get a job, but, um, he doesn't want me to, unless I have to, because he and I both know that the second I find a new job, I'm not going to be able to do this as much as I want to. Like, this is going to really take a step step backwards. Um, so, like, I, de- I devote a lot of time to this every day, you know, not just, like, TikTok, but just my art in general. But I spend a lot of time on live with you guys, and that wouldn't happen anymore. So, <laughs> yeah. So I don't do many, many crafts, uh, craft fairs. I pretty much stick to the holiday season. Um, I just started doing like my first craft show was like the Christmas season, not last year, but the year before that was my first ever show. Um, and so then last year, like over, you know, the rest of the year, um, I did a far, I did a farmer's market every other week from like May through August or something. Um, that sucked, at least for me. Um, I'm not doing that again this year. I just, I feel like it just probably wasn't like the best place for me to be. Farmer's markets, you know, people aren't looking to spend money on art. They're looking for like cheap produce and and things like that. Um, so like I won't be doing that. Um, but I am trying to get a little more like, um, like during the year kind of shows, but the only show I have right now that isn't like a holiday show is like, I have one in May. So we will see. Um, cause I'm still kind of getting to know like what sells super well. Um, I know for a fact during the holiday season, my ornaments, but my ornaments are my top seller anywhere. Um, whether it be on TikTok, on Etsy, um, on my website, on, like during craft shows, like no matter what, like Christmas ornaments are my number one seller. And if I could do Christmas ornaments year round, that's all I would do because that's how well they sell for me. So um, definitely Christmas ornaments, but anything besides that, um, I mean, it depends on where you're, where you're at, you know, Um, different places, people want different things, people can afford different things. And it's never going to be the same everywhere. So like just if just because I have luck with one thing doesn't mean you will. Um, But what I have noticed is that most things that are priced from anywhere from like, you know, zero (laughs) to twenty five to thirty dollars anywhere in that price range, I feel like 
10 to 15 dollars is a sweet spot but like 20 to 30 dollars isn't unheard of for people to buy stuff at like craft shows you know but most stuff like cheaper sells well so like keychains phone grips badge reels stickers you know things like that that sells well for me in that small range and then christmas ornaments i've never really sold any of my big stuff that's strictly online nobody ever pays 80 to 120 dollars for my big pieces of art i haven't sold one at a show yet but my small ones my small things sell I missed something about a matte black spray. Oh, you discovered live art TikTok. <laughs> what what about a matte black spray? I think I missed. I don't think that one came through. I forgot some dots and I'm hoping that I can just add them in here. <laughs> Whoops. Yep, less expensive items, yep. Yes, take your time with this art. I definitely recommend it for anybody who wants to try it. Um, not because, not, not just because you can make some really pretty things, but like, it's very meditative and like I'm not one of those people that will do yoga or you know burn incense or you know things like that like that's just that's just not something that I'm interested in so like saying that something's meditative like doesn't like it just it, it sounds weird coming out of my mouth but that it's really that's kind of like how it is you know it's just something different because, uh, I mean, it might not seem like it's very meditative to me right now because I'm sitting here, like, chatting with you guys and things like that. Um, and, I mean, it is, but painting alone is even better. No offense. Um, but I, I do like to hang out with you guys because I get bored and I feel lonely. But there is something special about sitting and just painting. Like, sometimes I'll just, like, put on some music or put on, like, a a documentary kind of podcasty looking like sounding thing where I can just listen while I paint. Um, and I get very like absorbed in it. And then I'll look at the clock and be like, Oh damn, I've already been painting for three hours and it didn't even feel like it. But you, this really forces you to just like slow down. I'm one of those people. I'm not like clinically diagnosed with anything, but like I, I have to be some type of like AD, ADHD or like, you know, something because like I just, I, I, my, I live my life a bazillion miles an hour and I can't even help it, you know, and I talk really, really fast and I try and slow down like the speed at what I talk for you guys so that like I don't just mumble jumble everything. Um, but this forces me to just like chill the F out um because I have I can't you can't just like quickly dot through this or you're gonna make a bunch of mistakes things are gonna run together really bad um you know you really need to like take your time with this art which is nice but it forces you to like slow down and it's done a lot of wonderful things for like me um that like I just think it's just going to be beneficial to a lot of people. And I know that there have been a lot of people that have said that too, that it's very meditative and relaxing and has helped them out a lot. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I have to have, I, I, I have to have something because like I just, you know, I have to. I don't want to say I feel like normal all the time. That I hate saying the word normal, but I think I think you know what I mean. There are things that I'll see on TikTok and I'll be like, huh. That sounds like me in a freaking nutshell. Um, but yeah, so <laughs> this helps me a lot. It helps me concentrate.
setting a schedule for yourself is super helpful. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I can't just paint all day long. I have to like make myself do other things. And so I kind of like get into a little bit of like a routine to kind of help me out. But yeah, it is, it is helpful to set some type of schedule for yourself or routine for yourself. Like for me, my routine is I wake up, I'm trying to get back to going to the gym a few times a week. I used to go five times a day and then it went down to three. And now I'm lucky if I go two times a week. <laughs> so I'm, I'm trying to get myself back into my like gym routine. But um, my normal week was like I'd go I'd, Monday, I would wake up and go to the gym. Then I would come home, I would shower. And then I would like vacuum my apartment take the garbage out you know I clean the litter box every day but like I would do like my big cleaning days Monday Wednesday Saturday um you know and then I have like other things that I do on certain days but that's that that has really kind of helped me kind of just like get out of like a funk you know because yeah I paint every day and you know I'm, I'm trying to build a small business but then I'd get like really down on myself and think that I like wasn't doing anything, wasn't contributing to the world or society and all that kind of stuff. But then I started making like a, a schedule and like a routine for myself and it's helped a lot. No problem. Have a wonderful time at work. Thanks for hanging out. I'm live a lot. So if you just go onto my profile, one of my pinned videos has my like live schedule. It's pretty much the same every week unless I tell you guys otherwise. So Hopefully you can catch me again. Hello in New Jersey. I'm not too, 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 too far from you. I'm just in P Pennsylvania. Pittsburgh. Not too, too far from you. Oh, hey, Lisa. Um, I was able to hear back about your stickers, by the way. Because um, <laughs> I, I didn't tattle, but I had to get a hold of like the CEO here on TikTok. But um, I talked to someone on Instagram and they, they were talking to me. So I should be able to place your order um, as soon as you want. I'll probably place a couple things for myself as well while I'm ordering for you. But yeah, it seems like, uh, so what, what they'll do is they'll do the outline hollow and they'll cut out the heart on that one. And then for the vinyl one, they'll do a vinyl sticker and they'll cut out the heart on that one. At least that, that's what they said they could do, so. That's what I'm going to put in the order notes and they should follow it because that's what they said on Instagram. So, um, so designs like this one where there's just like random mandalas all over the place, this is completely freehanded. Um, my other pieces, the other animals that I've done recently, where it's like more of like a circular kind of design, that is like slightly mapped out. Um, I don't really follow like line work really, but I follow like the circles to keep, you know, my, my circles like symmetrical, if that makes sense. But I don't like follow any like crisscross like line work. Uh, but this is all freehanded cause I'll, I'll go back in and I'll cover everything with, with like other dots and it just kind of blends together. But, um, I'll use a like a chalk pencil, or not a chalk pencil, sorry, a watercolor pencil on things like this. And I have like a, a circular tool 
and I'll draw circles. So like all of like the, the dots that are in a circle and stuff, sorry, there's a glare, but that was all like mapped out in a watercolor pencil, but yes. Was that you who was looking, who was waiting for me to restock badge holder, badge reels? I forget who it was, but I know that someone wanted me to. I made more. Sure thing. Yeah, I will, um, I'll let you know how much it is when I complete my order. But I mean, I, we already talked about what I thought it was. So it's probably still around that price anyways. I think it's like, what, like 15 or something for 50, I think. Something like that. I can't remember for sure, but it's it's around there. It's like $3 in some sense per 10, but you have to buy like five. You have to buy 50. So three times five is like 15-ish. So, <clears throat> oh yeah, I made it. All from uh, little cup holder, pen holder things from the Dollar Tree. So this whole thing is going to be covered in um, dots. So I'm just going to fill in all the black with dots. So it's just going to kind of merge together, if that makes sense. This method is just kind of like a enjoy the process, have fun with it type of thing. Because it doesn't matter where the mandalas are at all. It all just kind of looks like fun in the end. It looks like kind of weird because there's like so much black, but as I put it all together, it's not going to look that bad. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I was gonna do the dots on the tail. I know that their tails are kind of like stripey, but the dots I think will look good. I'll just do like dots. And I think it'll be good to use the light color and go in with like the darker red. Yeah, that'll work. Is it May? Is that is that your name, May? May, are you still on here? Hopefully I'm saying, hopefully your name is actually May. <laughs> Whoops, slightly off camera. So sorry about that. Well, that's so satisfying. <laughs> All right. And then I think what I'm going to do for these is I'm going to kind of do some swooshes to kind of make it look a little pointy. Well, that's good to know, Lisa. I mean, not good because you had to spend your money to learn that, but I was wondering, 
I was wondering about that because um, I tried to like measure. I tried to go off like the measurements um, that I had for mine and the measurements didn't quite match up. So I, I did wonder if it was just if it wouldn't work or if it would and it was just like a slight difference in the measurements but well I guess yeah you answered it for me that's unfortunate though I'm sorry thanks did you see the badge holders that you were looking for? Were the badge reels? Because I did make some new ones um, recently, within the last like couple weeks. Oh darn it, that's so annoying. I'm glad I was going to order some, but I'm glad I didn't. It sucks that you had to find out the hard way, though. You know, every once in a while while I'm painting... I will, like, think of things, like, yes, this is not going to be realistic, but there are certain parts of it that I'm like, ooh, that would be cool if I did this. Like, I'm kind of, like, giving myself a pat on the back for using the solutions for that. I think that's fancy. Oh, yes. Here, I'll show you my new ones. Um, so these ones are, they're not complete yet because I need to, I ran out of badge reels, but... We have these three. Um, these ones will be bad reels at some point. Oh, sorry. So these these are like some rainbowy ones. And this one's like a purple and silver. And then I got probably six or seven more that I like than I had before. Um, so this one is new. We got pink one, sunflower, pastel. I don't know if you were the one who was asking for those colors specifically. There was someone who asked for those three, but I don't remember who it was. So daisy, this one is new. That one's newer. These ones are older. But yeah, we have a, we have a few. We have quite a few. And I'm like, I make them as I can. Oh, there's more up here. I forgot. These are the ones we did on live the other day, so... There's this blue one, and then this is like a pastel with some black, and then a green and blue one, and then this was one, you guys, I messed this one up, I don't know what happened, but this one got all weird, so we painted this one on live, and it's just gonna, gonna never be anything, it's just gonna sit there, but <laughs> I make those into keychains too, just so you know. Here are some keychains. They're the same thing, except instead of them being on a badge reel, I made them into keychains. So, yeah. Um, badge reels are 15, I think. 15 or 16, I can't remember for sure. And then keychains are 12. I do. Um, but I have quite a handful that I'm just not making any more at the moment. Um, I'll show you. <laughs> so, don't mind the stickers because they don't mean anything. But we have pressed flowered phone grips. They're not dotted, but I had a little like pressed flower obsession for a little bit. So, made some pressed flower phone grips. We have some like little shapes. A little elephant, Jack Skellington, avocado, and apple, things like that. And then we have, like, some small ones. And then we got some big, colorful ones. But 
I used to have one on my phone, but I got a new phone case and I just, I don't want to put one on my phone yet. This one's my favorite out of these ones. This one's my favorite. <laughs> um, they all, they all, uh, they all differ. They're all different prices. It just kind of depends on which ones they are. So I have them all on my website, you guys. Not on my Etsy. My website is linked in my bio. Daygrons.art.com. But they're all on there. Some are like 12 or 14. Some are all the way up to like 20. It just depends on how long it takes me to make them. Isn't the elephant cute? You're welcome. All right, we got less than 10 minutes left. I gotta buckle down. I knew we weren't gonna finish this today though, so. But. Yeah, one of my things that I, I like to do is that I like to have things of all different like prices and just things because one I can never make up my mind on what I want to paint so I'll kind of do a little bit of everything so that's why there's so many different things that I make any anywhere from like little small trinkets to like wall decor basically <laughs> um and I like to keep like all different price ranges too because there's nothing worse than like wanting something and not being able to afford it so you know my mindset is even if you can't afford some of my art, if you want some of my art, you can hopefully afford something. Like I have stickers, you know, for a couple bucks and stuff like that. So I try and make my art easily accessible and affordable for everyone. Oh, yay. I'm glad you'd like him. Um, tomorrow I will be live again. So, you know, no pressure if you can't if you can't be on here to watch. But tomorrow we're going to work on all of his dots in the center, like all the rest of his dots, and hopefully, hopefully get him finished tomorrow so that I can get, you know, his resin coat on him um, and hopefully have him like out, done and out by like the beginning of next week, you know, give him a couple days to cure, put his resin coat on tomorrow or um, Sunday morning maybe and then you know give them through like monday to cure type of thing but yeah hey thanks so for those of you guys who were like just who just started joining me this live or recently um i pretty much go live the same time same days every week I have my live schedule oh no worries no worries um, I have my live schedule pinned um, in my like the one of my first videos it's a pinned video um, a lot my live schedule and just like other important details so um, unless I tell you guys otherwise um, like each week um, expect that my lives are gonna be the same next weekend though i will not likely be live on the weekend um probably not friday maybe friday morning but not friday afternoon i have to spend time with my parents dogs next weekend i have to watch them and so i'm not going to be painting at their house um but <laughs> everything else for next week should be the same and then I'll be live tomorrow around two o'clock until five o'clock um, tomorrow. So like we'll we'll finish this hopefully, and then you know work on other things. I don't have any more custom orders, so we'll probably just randomly paint something. I don't know yet. <laughs> I want to paint a flamingo. This one's the next free paint piece. Um, I think unless I decide to do something else, but this one is painted, uh, prepped and ready to be painted. So I'm probably going to do a, like a pink kind of color scheme on this, but I don't know for sure. So you guys might see that coming up here shortly. Um, maybe a practice peacock. I don't know. I might do that one on my own in case I mess up. 
but um, <laughs> I don't. Nope, I have a, a place that I get my laser cut wood. Um, I have them like linked in my bio because I have a discount code for them. But it's 24hourcrafts.com. Do not buy from their Etsy. I mean, you can, but if you do, you can't use my discount code. But uh, their website is 24hourcrafts.com. Um, their site is like always 30% off, but I have an extra 10% off code so that like it's stackable. So it's like you wind up getting like 40% off when everything's all said and done. Free shipping after $35. They ship, they process orders and ship out within 24 hours unless it's like the weekends or a holiday. So they have really fast shipping and processing time. So I love them. And if you live anywhere close to Pennsylvania, you'll get it like extra specially fast because they're located in Pennsylvania. So yes, of course. Thank you again for ordering. I'm so excited to finish it up. So, so excited to finish them up. The peacock. So let me show you guys the peacock because we only have like another like couple minutes before I have to hop off. So remember the other day when I was saying that I couldn't find a good peacock shape. So let me preface this by saying, I know that this is a turkey. <laughs> this is supposed to be a turkey shape. Um, but I was hoping that I could like do something with it. So like on the back, cause I'm gonna peel this off anyways, my thought, and this is gonna be a rough sketch. So like nobody come at me cause I can't draw, but I hope to like get my point across. My idea is that like, you know, like peacock head. Okay, I, this is, whatever, okay? It's not gonna look like this, but you, you get my point, okay? Some type of like peacock head in the center like this, where I'll like paint it up and I don't know, do something with it. And then, you know, kind of figure out how to do the, the feathers behind it. But that's my idea for this piece. Um, but since I'm so like not sure about it, I don't know if I want to do it live because like I don't even know what I'm doing. So it's probably going to take a lot of like me messing up. And I don't know if I want to subject you guys to that struggle. <laughs> of course, always happy to give tips. Uh, it's a lot easier to do these lives when you guys talk to me and ask me questions. Um, I mean, it doesn't matter anyways. But I do like it when I can talk to you guys pretty like you know the whole time and not like have to find ways to fill up awkward silence so um I don't think so maybe to like make a stencil but not it won't stick to this wood I don't think because vinyl won't stick to canvas um and since like this has a little bit of like a even when it's sanded down I just don't think that the vinyl is gonna stick Hey, I'm just about to hop off, but I um, I put the resin on your doggo today. So we spent the first like, I don't know, 45 minutes of this live doing our little resin tutorial. So, but I might, yeah, I might use my, my Cricut to kind of cut, but there she is. She's just hanging out um, under in resin, <laughs> just hanging out. There she is. So hopefully I'll be able to touch it tomorrow and take a good picture of it. It will? Hmm. Well, you know, <clears throat> good for me for giving away all of my pretty vinyl to my sister. <laughs> I'm glad you love it. I'm glad. So she should be fine. I think she'll need two coats because typically most of those need two coats. So um i'll at least be able to take a picture of it tomorrow but i'll probably have to put a second resin coat on it so expect for me to be able to ship it out probably the beginning of next week so well i'll have to look on my um see see what cricket i can make like the head with so that i don't have to draw it because that might actually be really helpful but i got rid of like all of my vinyl like all of the specialty vinyl because i just don't use it so I don't know. I'm not sure. But yeah, we'll find something to do. But tomorrow from like two, I don't know, starting at two, we'll, we'll try and finish this guy. And then after this one, I'm not sure. We might have to finish something else. But that's it for today. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me. Um, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Have a wonderful 
Friday. Yeah. Bye. <laughs>